knowledges. They are the analytical knowledge of the meaning, of the Dharma, of languages, of inspired speech. And which are they? They have meaning, Dharma, languages, and inspired speech for their respective objective supports. The 18 Special Buddha Dharmas And what are the 18 Special Buddha Dharmas of a Tathagata? The Tathagata does not trip up, is not rash or noisy in his speech, is never robbed of his mindfulness. His thought is never unconcentrated. He has no perception of difference. His even-mindedness is not due to lack of consideration. He never fails in his zeal, vigor, mindfulness, concentration, wisdom, or in his deliverance, or his vision and cognition of deliverance. All his deeds of XIII body, XIV voice and XV mind are preceded by cognition and continue to conform to cognition. His vision and cognition regarding the XVI past, XVII future, and XVII present period of time proceeds unobstructed and freely. The enjoyment body. See in what are the Tathagata's 32 marks of a superman. The Lord's feet are well placed, I. E. He places the entire soles of his feet evenly on the ground, just as a round basket which, when tipped up moves down and when tipped down moves up. He has, stamped on the soles of his feet, lines depicting a wheel, I. E. On his two feet there grow wheels with a thousand spokes, with rims and naves complete in every respect. The soles of his feet and the palms of his hands are tender and soft, I. E. His hands and feet are softer than those of others. His toes and fingers are long, I. E. They are longer than those of others. His hands and feet are joined by webs, I. E. As with the royal goose. He has broad heels, I. E. His two heels are broader than those of others. His feet have inconspicuous ankle bones, I. E. His two ankle bones grow high up. His shanks are like those of the black antelope, I. E. Because his shanks are gradually tapering away, like those of the black antelope, king of deer. His bodily frame is well grown, tall, and straight, I. E. It is not crooked, not bent, well grown in all ways. Its height is seven cubits, and everything is proportioned accordingly. His arms reach to his knees, I. E. When he stands up, he can, without bending down, whenever his wants touch and stroke his kneecaps with the two palms of his hands. His male organ is hidden in a sheath, I. E. As in the case of a noble thoroughbred elephant or horse. The hairs on his body stand separately. In each hair paw there grows only one single hair, which is soft curls in rings, and turns to the right. The hairs on his body point upwards, I. E. The hairs of his head and body grow in such a way that they are turned upwards. They are blue-black, soft curl in rings, and turn to the right. His skin is smooth and delicate. Water and dust do not cleave to his body. His skin has a golden hue, making him handsome and attractive, I. E. His body shines brightly just like a bar of gold. He has seven prominences, I. E. Two below on the soles of his feet. Two on his hands, two on his shoulder blades and one behind on his neck, and they are all handsome, attractive, and beautiful to behold, with ample flesh and blood. The upper part of his body is like that of a lion, I. E. It is large like that of the lion, king of beasts. His shoulders are gently curved, I. E. Because they are muscular his shoulder are everywhere amply developed. The interval between his shoulders is well filled, I. E. His chest is wide and well elevated. The circumference of his body is like that of the fig tree, I. E. As great as he is in height, so great is he in width. As great as he is in width, so great is he in height. He has jaws like a lion, I. E. His jaws are well rounded, as those of the lion. He has a total of 40 teeth, I. E. 20 below and 20 above. There are no gaps between his teeth, I. E. His teeth are all close together. His teeth are equal in size, because not some teeth are higher and some lower. His teeth are very white, I. E. They shine brilliantly. He has taste conductors which give him the most excellent taste, I. E. The taste conductors in his throat are quite straight. Those in his tongue are not twisted or bloodless. 
Since his nerves are so well endowed, his body is supremely fit. His tongue is long, I. E. When he desires to do so he touches and strokes with his tongue the apertures of his two ears, and he covers with his tongue the apertures of his two eyes and his entire face up to the hairs. His voice is like that of Brahma, I. E. His voice can be heard as clearly in a large assembly as in the inside of a room, and his speech is as charming as the song of the Kalavinka bird. His eyes are intensely black, I. E. The black of his eyes is pure black, and the white pure white. His eyelashes are like those of a magnificent heifer, I. E. His eyelashes are like those of a great bull. Those below are just below and those above are just above. And they are in no way disarranged. He has a tuft of hair between his eyebrows, I. E. A tuft of hair grows between his eyebrows which is very white and soft, resembles a tuft of cotton, and is not in touch with his eyebrows, the hairs turning to the right and curling in rings. There is a cowl on his head, I. E. His head is well rounded and through the large circumference of the cowl it looks exceedingly beautiful. These are the 32 marks of a superman. With the help of them he irradiates the great trichilocosm with his radiance and with his natural splendor he also irradiates the countless world systems, if he so wishes. And the Tathagata sustains beings with his halo out of pity for them. When, however, the Lord's halo no longer sustains them, then, overcome by his natural splendor, the light of sun and moon are not longer encountered, and the moon and the half moon, the days and the years cease to exist. And, with his natural voice he instructs the great trichilocosm, as often as he wishes to do so and as far as his radiance reaches. It is thus that the Bodhisattva helps beings with the two kinds of gift, I. E. The worldly gift and the gift of Dharma. This is the Bodhisattva's wonderful and astonishing Dharma. E. And how does the Bodhisattva help the beings with kind's words? He helps them with the six perfections. And why? Because all wholesome dharmas are included, sixteen are in these perfections. E. And how does the Bodhisattva help beings with actions which benefit them? He has helped beings for a long time with these six perfections. I. E. With gifts, kind words, actions for their benefit and consistency between words and deeds. D. And he demonstrates to beings the eighty accessory marks. Which are they? The nails of the Buddhas and Lords are coppery colored, too, glossy like a flower in full bloom and elevated, their toes and fingers are four, rounded, five, elongated, six, compact and seven, tapering, their veins eight, do not bulge out, and nine, are free from knots, ten, their ankle bones do not bulge out, eleven, their feet are not unequal in size, they walk with the strike of twelve, a lion, thirteen, an elephant, fourteen, the royal goose, and fifteen, of a lordly bull, and sixteen, they walk while turning to the right, and seventeen, elegantly, their limbs, eighteen, straight, nineteen, well-rounded, twenty, smooth, and twenty-one, slender, twenty-two, their knee orbs are well-formed, twenty-three, their genitals are fully developed, twenty-four, their bearing is always dignified. They walk at an even pace. 27. Their limbs are salubrious. 28. Soft and 29. Clean. 30. They are worthy of being looked at. 31. Their face is not large but 32. Noble. 33. Their lips are red. 34. Their countenance is perfect. 35. There are deep. Their navels are 36 deep and thirty-seven, twisted to the right, their bodies are thirty-eight, ever youthful and thirty-nine, unimpaired by any defects, they have prominences and forty-one, a firm and solid, forty-two, all their limbs are well proportioned, forty-three, their hands and feet are well formed, their bellies are forty-four, round, forty-five, smooth and forty-six, unmarked, and forty-seven, do not hang down, 48. From all sides they are beautiful to behold. 49. Their habits are clean. 50. They are free from black moles. 51. Their hands are soft like cotton wool. The lines on their hands are 52. 
Deep 53. Extensive 54. Uncurtailed and 55. Crimson. Their countenance is serene. 57. Their face is like the moon. Their tongue is 58. Slender and 59. Copper colored. Their voices are 60. Perfect in every way. 61. Sweet and beautiful. Their eye teeth are 62. Round. 63. Sharp and 64. Very white. 65. Their noses are prominent. 66. Their eyes are very large. 67. Their eyelashes shine beautifully. Their eyebrows are 68. Extensive. 69. Smooth. 70. With hairs of equal length and 71. Glossy. 72. Their ears are large and equal in size. Their foreheads are 73. Well formed and 74. Broad. The hair of their heads is 75. Smooth. 76. Not shaggy. 77. 78. And not rough. 79. Minus 80. They have the Srivatsa sign and the swastika on the palms of their hands and the soles of their feet. It is with these 80 accessory marks that the Tathagata's body is endowed. The cognition of defilement and purification. Moreover, Subhuti, the Bodhisattva, who caused sin perfect wisdom, admonishes the Bodhisattvas as follow. Sons of good family, may you become skilled in the consummation of the letters. May you become skilled in one letter, in two letters, two. In forty-two letters. May you through these forty-two letters come to a state which has moved away from everything. May you meditate on the forty-two letters as contained in one letter, and may you meditate on one single letter as contained in forty-two letters. And that Bodhisattva becomes skilled in the forty-two letters, and in meditating.